Namaste, my friends, and welcome back to The Myth Within. Happy Friday. I'm very grateful that you decided to join me here today. I am Dr. Tom, and as always, we are going to have a little bit of quotations and a little bit of fun exploring um, the means by which psychological myths, or myths in general, um, affect our psychological development moving forward. During this week, we began to examine the myth of Daedalus, um, father of Icarus. And in our explorations of this myth, we begin to see nuances by which um, our own psychology, our own mind could trap us within its own limitations as well as its strengths. And I'm wondering if anyone's ever had that phenomenon where a strength became their limitation and then vice versa, a weakness or a perceived weakness became the area of one's strength. In psychology, um, especially around fairy tales, um, hearth stories, stories of the heart. We learn of individuals that go into the basement to sift through the ashes. This literally is the theme of the story Cinderella, as well as a Norwegian um, tale about the ash boy. I think it's Askirgian, if I remember right. Um, I may have pronounced that wrong, but um, I believe that was the name, who literally represents the boy of cinders, and Cinderella, who literally represents Ella, girl of cinders, um, ash. And so as we begin to tend the ashes, as we begin to sift through those ashes, we do begin to see aspects of hidden gold. And in the myth of Daedalus, um, we begin to see this as well, because his own ingenuity imprisoned him in the labyrinth he built for King Minos. But through that ingenuity, he is also able to plan the means for his escape. And in the last um, scene that we had seen, we had viewed Icarus being introduced, his son, who was very playful and would mold the wax in his hands and would often get in the way of his father, especially as his father was um, adhering to his labors. And so as we take a look at the myth of Daedalus, we begin to see elements by which fathers and parents in general, um, this story is about a father and a son, but parents in general can begin to mold the generation forward towards the dreams or the aspirations that they have. And one of my passions within the field of psychology is really to work with children, not only to amplify their inner strengths to become who they are, but to allow parents a general understanding of the developmental sequence all people undergo, um, especially as they yearn to find themselves. Now, this journey is symbiotic in nature because as a father, I have grown tremendously um, just from learning from watching my children grow. Um, in fact, I was working on my doctorate when my first child was born and had completed it when my second child was born. And even though I had studied um, countless hours of developmental psychology to practice in what I do today, what I see um, in lived action is far greater than what any one textbook and or researcher can ever um, portray as it relates to the human capacity to grow during this journey we call self-realization. So in essence, I have learned as much from my children's playing and as much from my children's getting in and out of trouble as I have from books that have um, geared me in how to help others, um, help others understand what their children are going through. Now, back into the story, Icarus is getting into a little bit of trouble here. He's messing with his father's wax, and it's getting in the way of his labors. And from this perspective, the father looks upon him, but there is an essence of letting this go. And I think this is an important lesson in the myth, because in this area of letting go... 
we allow our children to begin to express themselves and learn about the developmental journey they undertake from their own perspective. Now, as a parent, it's our job and our duty to warn them of the dangers that are abound as it relates to um, personal development, as it relates to life itself. You want to instill a healthy knowledge of what the world entails um, so that they can begin to navigate it in a safe perspective. But there's always an element of risk present. And I think a chorus in this um, in this scene really begins to show this because in his play, yes, it does mess with his father's labors, but he also is learning the means by which he can develop himself now unfortunately the story is tragic it's a greek tragedy but um, in normal development a child must learn um, through the play through their um, through their experimentation and this unfortunately is an element that far too often begins to deteriorate in adults we lose an experimental attitude as robert bly would would say we lose our golden ball and we spend a majority of our lives trying to retouch upon that golden ball i once heard a very wise saying i don't know where it came from but it goes a little something like this we spend our youth yearning to grow up to have that freedom but we spend the rest of our adult life yearning to get back to that freedom that youth provided us I think there's a kernel of truth and a kernel of wisdom within this. And this brings me to today's quote by former President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. We cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. I think in our story, we begin to see a patient father watching his son um, play with the wax in the story and we see an element of patience present this is this is needed in assisting youth to begin to find their inner strengths now while the story itself is tragic i think there's a kernel of truth in here that we have to allow children to play to experiment and furthermore, I think as, an, as fr coming from an adult perspective, we also have to allow ourselves to experiment, to get back to this place of childhood in order to realize the potential that lies within. As the story began, Daedalus's ingenuity ultimately imprisoned him. However, it's the source of ingenuity that imprisoned him that those ashes that lay upon the labyrinth that allowed the glowing embers to begin to shine, which allowed him an escape. If he couldn't go down the lowly route by land and sea, he would have to escape by air and take a flight of fancy to begin to realize his true potential and his true freedom. Now, we will continue the exploration of the myth of Daedalus next week because there's a host of psychological, um, there's a wealth of psychological information in the story as it relates to our personal development, how we go within in order to come outside, and how we have to begin to build our personal foundation in order to aspire towards our dreams. What dreams do you aspire towards? How do they affect you? Do you practice a psychology of gratitude, an attitude of gratitude, as you advance towards those dreams? Until next time, my friends, I wish you namaste, and may peace find you during this weekend, and I look forward to speaking again with you next week. Thank you for listening. Bye.